Hey Hunters, Lord here, back with yet another Iceborne video. In my last video, where I covered the best endgame weapons for each weapon type, a lot of you wanted a more progressional guide to get to the point where you can farm those endgame weapons. So, in this video, I'm going to cover progressional sets for multiple stages of the game, as well as provide a general overview of weapons that are good for each stage of the game prior to unlocking and hunting Culv, Safi, Alatrion, and Fatalis. I want to add a small disclaimer that this will be a slightly more general video, as trying to cover sets and weapons for all 14 weapon types throughout every stage of the game would make for an insanely long video. We could probably do a video on each one and it would go well over 10 minutes. So I'll just be covering generally what the best weapons and armors overall are for that stage in the game. Just know that you may need to tweak some things here and there to fit your weapon of choice. If it would help you guys out, I would consider making a video where I go over a skill list of the important skills for each weapon type, so showing you what specific skills to look out for with each weapon type. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get straight into it. So starting off with low and high rank, which is base world, we're going to go ahead and recommend that you use either the Guardian or Defender Alpha gear. These are made specifically to help you grind through low and high rank without having to spend hundreds of hours farming. Guardian Alpha is a DLC armor that was given to everyone for free with Iceborne, so if you own Iceborne you should have this. If you're starting a brand new playthrough you can select it as your starting armor, otherwise it will be in your item box. And the Defender armor is available for purchase through the Armory. The Defender weapons can be crafted very easily at the Smithy very early on, and can be upgraded to Rarity 7. To be completely honest, there's no real point in farming low or high rank gear at this stage, as it all becomes basically irrelevant as soon as you get into Iceborne. That's not to say, of course, that you can't farm different weapons and armors. If that's your preferred way to play, then go ahead. However, it will just add a ton of time in the lower levels of the game, and all monsters that are in low and high rank also have master rank variants that you can fight and farm in Iceborne. TLDR, just use the Guardian or Defender armor and weapons, and wait to get into farming until you reach Iceborne. So once you've reached Iceborne, let's go ahead and look at some gear for general story progression before getting to the final story boss. You'll definitely want to start upgrading or crafting armors and weapons as soon as you can in Iceborne as the jump in monster health and damage in Iceborne is quite substantial from the end of high rank. To start, I would recommend just upgrading or crafting whatever you can, whatever you like, until you reach the part of the master rank story progression where you can begin farming for real sets. For raw weapons, the best options during the story before the final boss are Acidic, Glavinous, or Nargakuga. Nargakuga weapons have base purple sharpness, very good raw, and extremely good affinity, while the Acidic, Glavinous weapons have much better raw, much better slots, but you need quite a bit of handicraft to hit white or purple sharpness. For an armor set, three pieces of Tiastra, ideally the head, chest, and arms, to get you Master's Touch is going to be your go-to. You're going to want to try and get to 100% affinity by mixing and matching your waist and legs with those three armor parts as well as your decorations and charms. I'd recommend something like the Glavinous or Acidic Glavinous waist and legs. Really though, it's up to you what you go for for the waist and legs based on the skills that you want for your set. At this stage in the game for gunners, three pieces of Narga armor to get true spare shot is going to be super helpful until you at least unlock the razor sharp charm. Then for Pierce, Heavy Bow Gun, you're going to want to rock with the Viper Toby Kadachi Heavy Bow Gun. And for Spread 3, you'll want to start building into the Tsitsiaku Tree up to the Deadeye Destroyer 1, as this will eventually turn into the Zenogre Heavy Bow Gun, which is the best Spread 3 Heavy Bow Gun until you unlock Safi or Fatalis. So once you've beaten the final boss, you have a few more options. The final boss's weapons are extremely good raw options, and they're not too difficult to farm overall. However, the quest only appears every so often, so if you want, you can stick with your Narga or Acidic Glavinous weapons for raw, and you're more than welcome to do that. However, the best boost from beating the final boss is unlocking the Guiding Lands. The Guiding Lands introduce quite a few new monsters that give you some really strong options. Now the first monster that you unlock in Guiding Lands is Zenogre, and he has some very decent equipment. If you're looking to build for element, his weapons tend to be very strong. For melee, and if you're a gunner, you've just unlocked one of the best spread 3 heavy bowguns in the game. Once you level your forest level 3, you'll unlock Yingaruga, who has some very nice armor pieces, especially the beta legs. These will definitely become a mainstay in most of your melee sets, so you'll be running 3 pieces of Tiastra, the Gruger legs, and the waist of your choice. 
If you're a gunner, the Garuga Light Bowgun is very strong for sticky ammo, and you can max out the Garuga weapons by unlocking Scarred Yin Garuga, which can be done by getting to Master Rank 69 and beating the assignment against a Tempered Brachidios and Tempered Glavinus, and then leveling up your forest to level 6. The next great set of weapons and armors from the Guiding Lands is unlocking the Metal Wraths, Silver Rathalos and Gold Rathian. To unlock Silver Rathalos, you again need to be Master Rank 69 or higher, and you have to have beaten the Tempered Brachidios and Glavinus quest. Then you'll only need to level up your Coral Region to level 6. Then you'll unlock Silver Rathalos, who has insane armor for elemental builds, especially if you're going for Bow, Elemental Gunning, or Dual Blades. To unlock Gold Rathian, it's the same requirements as before, Master Rank 69, beat the Tempered, Brachidios and Glavinus, a sign quest, and then you'll have to level up your desert region to level 6. Gold Rathian weapons were either the best or second best in all raw weapon categories before any DLC monsters were released. These work great with your master's touch sets as they have a nice chunk of white sharpness, positive affinity, and a lot of poison. Poison is insanely strong at this stage in the game, but does get beat out by blast in the later stages of the game. Both Metal Wraths also have decent armor parts, like the Gold Rathian Greaves Beta or the Silver Rathalos Chest Beta. You can feel free to mix these in with your three pieces of Tiastra armor for your builds at this point, if you so choose. The next best set of armor and weapons comes from Raging Brachidios. This can be hunted as low as Master Rank 24, so if you have a buddy who has him unlocked, you can just join his quest or you can try and find an SOS Flare, but if you want to unlock him yourself, there's a few things you have to do. First of all, you have to unlock Rajang, which is done by leveling up your Volcano Guiding Lands to level 4, which will then unlock the special assignment to fight the Shatterhorn Kirin, which once you beat that, you'll unlock Rajang, and then once you've beaten Rajang, you'll unlock Stygian Zenogar cutscene. All you have to do is watch the Stygian Zenogar cutscene, and once you've done that, you can talk to the field team leader and fight Raging Brachidios as a special assignment. Once you've completed the special assignment, you can farm him with an optional quest at 6 star called Achy Bracky Heart. His weapons are ridiculously good, with very good slots, purple sharpness, and huge amounts of blast. This is going to be the first major change in your armor since getting the Tiastra armor at 5 star master rank. With two pieces of Raging Brachidios armor, you unlock Agitator Secret, which is far and above the best secret skill in the game for general play and damage. You want to run this set. Any Raging Brachidios weapon of your choice, the Kaiser Crown Beta, the Brachidium Male Alpha, then the Kaiser of Ambraces and Coil Beta, and the Brachidium Greaves Beta, you'll also want the Challenger Charm at level 5. This will net you some insane skills as you can see here, infinite sharpness, and just crazy damage overall. Also at this stage if you're running Impact File Charge Blade or Sticky Bowguns, you want to farm up 3 pieces of Master Rank Zora Magdaros armor for Artillery Secret and combine that with 2 pieces of Raging Brachidios armor to boost your file and sticky ammo massively. For non-sticky gunners using Pierce or Spread, after beating Rajang, you'll want to make a set consisting of the Golden Head and Waist Beta, the Kirin Chest Alpha, the Brute Tigrix Arms Beta, and the Garuga Greaves Beta, as well as the Razor Sharp Charm. This charm can be unlocked by completing these quests for the Housekeeper. If you need to unlock Brute Tigrix, just like with all the other unlockable monsters before, you get it at Master Rank 69 after beating the Tempered Brachidios and Glavinus Assign Quest then you can level up your Rotten region in the Guiding Lands to level 6. Shown now is an example set of Shield Spread 3 Heavy Bowgun. Of course, you'll just swap the arms out for the Brute Tigrix Beta Arms, and you'll be good to go until you get to the end game. After you've reached this stage in the game, the next logical progression will be to move on to quests like Culve, Taroth, Safajiva, Alatrion, and Fatalis, so that's going to be it for the progression up to this point. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below as it's a totally free way to support my channel and to make sure that this guide reaches other hunters in need. If you're new to the channel, new to Monster Hunter, or if you like what you saw today, do consider subscribing to the channel for lots more Monster Hunter content just like this. And with all that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you all a good day and happy hunting.